Wearzilla's Retrospective. I'm your host, Wearzilla. Yeah, we've come this far into Gamera's Alien Escapades Month. But... Frankly, the next movie feels more like it's just going through the motions instead of trying to be a good Gamera movie. I might actually need some help for this one. So... I sought out a version of this movie that'll do just that. Now this is not the first Gamera film to appear on Mystery Science Theater. All of the original films have been snarked on by Joel and the bots. Gamera vs. Gauss was even done twice, although I'm not sure why since it's one of the better Gamera movies. You can probably already guess what's going to be said about this movie, but let's just get through this and see what happens. Joel and the bots are here. What do you think's gonna happen? Something painful. Already we see this movie can't make up its mind as to what it wants to be, as it starts with a base on the moon under attack by an alien vessel, but then we cut to an international sea world and see a very careless worker here at sea world. And okay, bite down. Before meeting our obligatory child characters, Kenny and Helen. Oh, so we're letting the protagonist be a young boy and girl instead of just two boys for once. It's just a shame these two are probably the worst ones yet. The acting by the kids on set is just as bad as the dubbing. So after spotting an alien ship land in the water, they get on a boat with their fathers, Tom. How's your wife, Tom? What's that supposed to mean? And Henry to investigate. And yes, I looked it up. This isn't the dubbing. Those really are their names. However, they are abducted by the vessel. And once again, we have a woman from space taking orders from the monster Zigra, combining virus with Giran, I see. Well, the woman wants them to report back to the rest of the world how much more advanced Zigra is than the humans. But then she goes and sends out a transmission to the world. Then what was the point of abducting these people in the first place? Why didn't you just send out the transmission and not waste our time with these people? All you people of the Earth! All you people of the Earth! All you zombies I hide your faces! I am a representative of the great planet Zigra! Celestial body number 105. I know. Four, I am going to cause an earthquake in Tokyo that you never thought possible. An earthquake of magnitude 18. Greater than the recent earthquakes in Peru and the Indian Ocean. Oh, where do I even begin with that statement? Well, perhaps the most obvious earthquakes do not go up that high. Also, using a real-life tragedy to compare your abilities to? Classy. And finally, there's... Well... She further goes on to say she wants to destroy the human race so Ziggur can live in the oceans. Why? What does that accomplish? Humans don't live in the ocean! She puts the adults in a trance, but the kids manage to escape with their comatose parents. Unpleased, Ziggur decides to take action. Hey, this didn't happen in Jaws. You know, I'm actually starting to feel a little redundant with these guys around. So Ziggra apparently changed his mind and now orders his henchwoman to kill Kenny and Helen. You could have avoided this mess entirely if you had just not kidnapped them in the first place. So the henchwoman steals some clothes and goes after the kids, putting several people into trances along the way. But while she can do this very easily, catching two little kids is somehow out of her leg. And keep in mind, these are the same kids who met a hermit on the cliffside and thought they had gone back in time. And yet, they're still outsmarting this woman. Oh, and then the movie does something completely unforgivable. The military talks about the damage Zigra and the earthquakes are causing instead of showing it. Did I mention that after this movie, Dae went bankrupt? This fact probably doesn't surprise any of you. Meanwhile, Gamera attacks Zigra and again shows the ability to produce fire in places he shouldn't be, this time underwater. And once we see Zigra in his full form, it seems that he was larger than the ship, proving that it was bigger on the inside than it was on the outside. Oh, and it turns out Zigra is a giant shark monster. Come on, you really need me for this? 
And again, during this fight, Gamera finds himself in a position that could easily be made fun of when out of context. Meanwhile, Tom and Henry are freed from their comas by having someone make noises in a radio. Sonic waves is a weakness, huh? That sounds especially like what happened in Gamera vs. Jiger. So how many things have we been reusing from other Gamera films by now? So Ziggurat's henchwoman catches up with the kids and... If you Whoa. come closer, I'll beat you into the dolphin! Henry makes noises into the radio, and we learn this woman is actually a human who was under Ziggurat's control, having been abducted from the moon base at the beginning of the movie. As everyone gathers to figure out what to do, the kids suggest Gamera fight Ziggurat. Gamera is powerless. He's lying upside down in the sea now. What? When did that happen? Would have been nice if the movie showed that instead of this henchwoman pathetically trying and failing to capture Kenny and Helen. So Henry and Tom head down to below to resuscitate Gamera, with Kenny and Helen stowing away on board. We all live in a yellow bathosphere. Yellow bathosphere. Yellow bathosphere. They send an electric charge to Gamera, but then Zigra attacks, cutting our heroes off from their air supply. The bathosphere is recovered a few hours later. However, it is too late. Our heroes are dead. Which means... Oh my god! They killed Kenny! You bastards! Or so they think. Actually, it turns out Zigra sent out a sonic wave that disables their brain patterns. And making noises in the radio revive them. Okay... What was the point of that false drama? I think I just answered my own question. So Gamera wakes up and takes on Zigra, who seems equal in the water, but the second Gamera brings Zigra on land, it falls apart for him. Which leads to something that, well, I think Joel and the Bot's reaction sums it up best. Hey, get this, I got a turkey leg from the Red Fest. Huzzah! No. Oh, please say this is not happening. Camera, known as Bags to his friends. NBC. Rip Taylor on vibes. Get this hey. tune. Play yep. whipping pose. Woo! Hey. Yeah, you saw that. And then we get the obligatory out-of-nowhere violence moment as Gamera sets Ziggurat on fire, and we watch him burn. Well, it took a while, but the movie finally caught my attention. In the final two minutes. I think it goes without saying that this was the point where Gamera just lost it. The cuts to the budgets are clear as they can be without resorting to stock footage like the previous films. Scenes we should be shown are not present, but are told about instead. There are plot holes all over the place, some things being directly contradicted in the very scene they are presented. And unlike the kids of the previous films, Kenny and Helen contribute absolutely nothing to the plot. Instead, they are just here to, for me to make that South Park joke earlier, and for Helen to promote Coca-Cola. Seriously, she asks for it about three times in the movie, driving Crow insane. Oh, and for all the praise I gave Virus for doing intelligent things throughout his film, yeah, Zigra wishes he could be as good of an alien invader. You can probably guess that Zigra's more shark-like appearance is more intentional than Daie intended. I'll be the judge of that. You're right. I said it before and I'll say it again. As a series, Gamera has its fan base, and if the revival in the 90s has showed us anything, it's that Gamera can be made good. Watching this movie in particular makes us forget that from time to time, but even the past movies have their charm. Given that there's a new one planned for 2015, this series might make a comeback, so who knows what's in store for the franchise. Will it get overshadowed by the recent Godzilla movie? Probably, but we can only hope for the best. And on that subject, it does make me wonder if we will ever see this. Well, if you ask me, I think the world is ready for Godzilla vs. Gamera.